here we are back at the main sequencer interface. We've looked at the sound generators in their tracks, and the sequencer is where we program when a track's sound plays, how loud and for how long. Let's take a closer look at the interface first. We've already seen the overview section at the top, and we use this to navigate the sequencer by click dragging or clicking outside of it to jump to a point. Beneath that's the time ruler, and this can also be click dragged to navigate. The time signature grid is changed by right clicking over it and selecting the required choice. Beneath that are the individual tracks that make up the sequencer. They consist of a lane with various controls and the playback area is divided into steps. Each of the sound allocated to these tracks can be triggered by MIDI notes C1 to F1. We've already seen the preview button and browser, and next to those are the speed controls with various speeds expressed as a ratio of the current tempo. One is the current tempo time as it is, times two is double the tempo, and half is half speed and so on. Each track speed can be independent of the others. Gain is the track's overall level, and pan its position in the stereo field. At the far left is the current track name, which can be changed by double-clicking on it and entering a name as required. Beneath that is a track output meter to indicate track level. There are also solo and mute controls here for isolating tracks or a combination of them as required. Towards the far right are the output selectors that we saw earlier. Assign a track to either the master out or an individual output. The length of each track is also independent from the others and can be set by click dragging the length control handle at the bottom of the track lane. To change multiple tracks at once, either control click to select individual handles or shift click to select a range. Above the track length handle are where the steps are inserted. Dimmed indicates no step and highlighted indicates a step has been inserted. The track sound will play at that point in the sequence. Left click to insert a step, double click to remove it. The length of each step can be adjusted by click dragging the right hand edge and dragging out as required. However, this will only have an effect on sounds that are of a sustained type. Dragging out a simple kick drum, for example, will have no effect. Click drag on the top of a step to adjust its level relative to the others in the track. Dragging down lowers velocity dragging up increases it. A choke step can be inserted by inserting a step as normal and then right click and selecting toggle choke from the menu. A choke step is typically used to silence a cymbal replicating how a drummer might grab hold of a cymbal after striking it. The right click menu also contains commands for copying and pasting steps, tracks and patterns. Remember a pattern is all of the tracks combined as a unit. To copy a step, right click over it and select copy from the menu. This copies the step as it is including velocity, length and any micro edits. Multiple steps can be selected by either shift clicking to select a range or control clicking to select non-contiguous steps. Only steps in the same track can be selected at the same time though. Once multiple steps are selected, adjustments made to one affect the others in the selection. Tracks and patterns are copied by selecting the copy option from the relevant submenu. Clear them by selecting clear also from the relevant menu. To select all steps in a track, choose that option from the right click menu. Use the steps to create the required pattern. Up to 24 patterns can be created per instance of Break Tweaker. Click on the pattern selector to change to a new pattern slot. As we saw earlier, once patterns have been created, they can be triggered by MIDI notes C2 to B3.
So finally, let's take a look at micro-editing, which allows us to create some unique sounds by further editing an individual step. Micro-editing offers even more control over sound shaping. It operates at step level and can be used to create stuttering or buzzing type effects. It does this by chopping up a step into slices or repeating it over and over and tends to be more effective on more sustained sounds. There are a number of controls that allow adjustment of this process. Let's take a closer look. To open the micro editor, we first have to click on an existing step. This places that step into the editor, found beneath the sequencer. At the top is a preview button, click on it to hear the current changes. Micro edits are based on splitting the audio and this can be done using four different methods. The default is manual or divisions. The number of splits is set using the amount parameter. Click drag up or down to change the figure and hence the number of splits. Remember, hold down the control key for fine adjustment. Fine micro edits create a buzzing sound that have its own pitch. The pitch option allows you to set the pitch of that buzz sound as a musical note. Time adjusts the splits by musical intervals. This can be used to create a rhythmic effect. Similar to being able to set a pitch, it's also possible to set a frequency. Use the speed option to specify the required frequency. With re-trigger checked, the sound generators, modulation and envelopes are reset at the start of every split. Unchecked, and instead of resetting, they are gated according to the gate settings that we'll look at shortly. How the micro edits are placed within a step is controlled by the shape, tension and rotate parameters. Under the shape control, there are a multitude of shapes including some musical ones designed to create rifts and scales. With tension centered, the splits are distributed evenly. Moving the control either anti-clockwise or clockwise moves them in that direction and how they bunch together depends on the shape parameter. The rotate parameter controls the phase of the note and effectively moves the micro edit start point toward the end of the editor as it's increased. And the micro edit ren wraps around the note as this is adjusted. It's probably easier to understand if I demonstrate those in use. I'll select octave from the shape control with the time setting, tension and rotate at the default settings. The last half of the note rises an octave so half the note sounds an octave higher than the original pitch. Adjust the tension control and the amount of note an octave higher either increases or decreases depending on the setting. Just alt click on a control to reset it. The rotate control adjusts where the octave change happens while maintaining the ratio of change note. As I increase it the change point moves further down the note until it wraps around and eventually the first part of the note is an octave higher while the second part drops to the original pitch. Now let's look at the gate settings. These are used to control the space between the slices. The amount figure is a percentage the amount of silence associated with each edit. At zero, each slice is fully audible with no silence. At 50, each slice is half audible, half silent. At 90, 10% is audible and the rest silent. The spread control weights how the space is applied. Increasing or decreasing this effectively removes the amount setting from parts of the note. Moving it to the right leaves the gate amount setting toward the end of the note unaffected while removing them from the front. Move it to the left and the end of the note loses the gate amount setting.
The tail setting controls how the transition from audio to silence is handled. At zero, the transition is abrupt. As this figure is increased, a fade is applied to the transition, which has the effect of softening the tone of the sound as it's increased. Finally, the micro editor has the ability to edit each step for pitch, fade them in or out, as well as applying an effect to an individual step. Pitch first. The coarse pitch offset allows us to change the pitch of a step relative to the rest of the track. This can be used to create simple bass lines. For example, increase this to 3, moves the step up a third and tracks sound's bass pitch. Beneath the pitch control are two tabs. One is the Fade tab, the other the Effect tab. Fade applies a fade in or out to the step, especially useful for micro slice steps. And the type of fade is chosen from the drop down. The amount is how much of the chosen fade is applied. At 100%, the full fade is applied, and reducing this reduces the fade. The Curve control changes the way the fade is applied by changing the shape of the fade envelope. The Effect tab contains several effects. They're chosen from the drop-down. There are several distortion types as well as a chorus and high and low pass filters. The two controls vary their function depending on the effect type chosen. If one of the distortions is selected, they control the amount of distortion applied and its tone. If chorus is selected, these controls alter the amount and the rate. The high and low pass filters are adjustable for cutoff frequency, as well as the amount of resonance applied around that frequency. We looked at those controls earlier. And that's Isotope's Brake Tweaker. A great synth for creating some really unique rhythms and lines.